grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon text this morning is the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 11. Please feel free to grab a Bible from the pew rack in front of you or turn to the reading in your bulletin. Confidence is a very important thing. Confidence is something that when you have it, people can tell, and when you don't have it, people can tell that as well. Having confidence in what you're saying and what you're doing will generally be an encouragement to other people to listen to you or to follow you. I mean, think about it. If you've got two options of people that you're going to listen to, one of them is standing up straight and speaking in a clear voice and they sound like they know what they're talking about and the other one's kind of slouching down and isn't speaking so clearly, which one are you going to be more likely to listen to? remember back when I first started as a policeman right out of the academy, my sergeant was training me and we'd just gotten off a call that I didn't handle very well because I didn't really know what I was doing. My sergeant looked at me right in the eye and he told me, it doesn't matter if you have a clue what you're doing or not. It doesn't matter if you're scared to death or if you're up against something you've never seen before or whatever. You always act like you know exactly what you're doing and exactly what you're saying and most people are going to listen to you and do what you say. And that advice served me very well for several years as a police officer. There were a lot of situations that I was scared in. There were a lot of situations where I didn't have a single clue what I was doing or, or how I was going to get things under control. But I always acted like I knew what I was doing and, and most of the time people listened and did what I said because I seemed to be confident. That's, it's also important in our, in our lives to be confident in our things as well. I mean, just think about different people who use different tools for their work. I mean, a carpenter is confident in his saw and his lathe and his drill. A, a plumber is confident in his pliers and his pipe cutter and his, his wrenches. A welder is confident in his torch and his eye protection. A pastor is confident that the Holy Spirit is going to give him the words to speak each week during his sermon. Or that he's going to know what to say to that person who's in mourning. Or that he's going to know how to pray in a way that encourages others in their faith and in their trust in God. And not all that long before he was sent to prison, John the Baptist had been very confident in his ministry and in his preaching. St. John records John the Baptist proclaiming, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, as John saw Jesus approaching him in order to be baptized. And John's confidence in God, John's confidence in Jesus, is what led him to continue to proclaim that people needed to repent as they prepared for the coming of the promised Messiah. And that's what landed John in prison. He told King Herod that he needed to repent for taking his brother's wife as his own. And, and Herod didn't like that very much, so he sent John to prison, and he would later have him executed. John is sitting in prison. He knows who he is. He knows that he's the promised return of the prophet Elijah. He knows that it was his job to prepare the way of the Lord. He knows that he was supposed to come and show people that they needed to get ready for the promised Messiah to arrive on scene. But he's sitting in prison, and he's starting to wonder. He's looking around, and he's starting to wonder why, if he, or he's starting to wonder if he's really put his faith in the right place. He's, he's starting to wonder if this Jesus that he baptized really is the promised Messiah. And, and, and really, you can't blame John for thinking like that at all. I mean, sure, John saw some really amazing things. He was gifted by God to go and, and preach and prepare people for the coming Messiah. He witnessed the Holy Spirit descend from heaven like a dove when he baptized Jesus. He heard God's voice saying that Jesus was his son and with him he was well pleased. But now he's sitting in prison. Things have changed quite a bit. And as he's sitting in prison, he's having some doubts. Actually, he's not just having some doubts. John is at a low point. He is seriously discouraged right here. He's feeling as though he's been abandoned by God, and he's really questioning whether or not Jesus is who he says he is. I mean, if Jesus is really the promised Messiah, why hasn't he done anything yet? Why hasn't he made his move to get Herod off the throne and, and take his place as the ruler of the Israelites in Jerusalem? If, if Jesus really is the Messiah, why is he taking so long to claim the power that rightfully belongs to him here on earth? You ever feel like that? When it comes to your faith, when it comes to trusting in God and, and knowing that He's going to provide you with everything that you need, do you ever get to that time of despair 
and start to question whether or not God is even really paying attention or, or whether or not he's really going to do all that he's promised for you. I mean, sure you have. We've, we've all been there. We, we've all been at that point once or twice or, or maybe a whole bunch of times in our lives. We've all had questions about what God is really doing in our lives. We've all wondered if he's really been listening to our prayers or, or if he really is taking the time to answer our prayers. We've all gone through low points in our lives and, and wondered where on earth God is and why isn't he taking this struggle away from me right now. I can't handle all this by myself, God, but I really don't feel like you're around and I really don't feel like you're taking and carrying my burdens like you promised that you would. It's really easy to get to that point. It's really easy to allow the struggles and the problems that you're dealing with in your life draw you away from God. It's easy to let that stuff get in the middle of your relationship with God. It's easy to start to question and start to wonder if God is really there for you and if he really means what he says. That was where John the Baptist was. And, and really, that's probably where his followers were as well. John the Baptist was probably struggling with being in prison. He was probably struggling and, and wondering if he'd really done things right or if, he'd, or if he'd gone down the wrong path as he preached and baptized people. And chances are pretty good that his disciples were having some of the same questions. They were probably wondering why they were following a guy who'd been thrown into prison. They were probably wondering if, if John's message was really right about the coming Messiah because if it was, why was John rotting away in a jail cell instead of being free and continuing his work? So John sent his disciples to Jesus. And he sent them with one simple question. Are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Are you really the promised Messiah? Are you the guy that John's been talking about or have we completely misunderstood and do we need to be looking for somebody else? I mean, you've got to give it to John here. He's not messing around. He's not beating around the bush and, and worrying about offending anyone with this question. He really wants an answer. This is important to him. So he asks the direct question because he really needs to know if Jesus is who he says he is. And look at what Jesus says, verses 4 to 6. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up. And blessed is the one who's not offended by me. Now, if that sounds a little familiar to you, it's for good reason. Jesus is paraphrasing what the prophet Isaiah said in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 35 today. In verses 5 and 6 of Isaiah 35, he says, The eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. Jesus answers John's questions by telling his disciples that he's the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. Jesus tells John and his disciples that he's the one who has been promised since Adam and Eve's fall into sin. Jesus makes his answer very clear to John's disciples. He doesn't want there to be any mistake at all. Go and tell John. All these things that Isaiah said were going to happen, they're happening. And really, Jesus could continue on to say, all the things that all the prophets said were going to happen will be fulfilled through my work here on earth among you. And that's a pretty awesome answer that Jesus gives. He doesn't just say, yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm the promised Messiah. How you doing? I mean, how easy would it be to just ignore that answer and, and wonder if he's just saying it or something? Instead, Jesus answers and says, look, all these things that were prophesied, they were prophesied and now they're happening through me. I am the promised Messiah. So that's great news for John. Even though he's sitting in prison, even though he's soon going to be beheaded by Herod, he can know that he's done the work that God called him to do. He has prepared the way of the Lord. He can put his faith in Jesus because he knows that he is the promised Messiah. But what about us? I mean, John the Baptist was able to send his disciples right to Jesus to ask the question. He got the answer right from Jesus himself. But what about us when we're struggling with our faith? when we're struggling with wondering where God is working in our lives, when we're just struggling, what are we supposed to do? I mean, we can't just send someone down the street real quick to talk to Jesus for us. So what are we supposed to do? 
My friends, that's why Jesus left us with the church here on earth. That's why when Jesus ascended back into heaven, he didn't leave us alone to fend for ourselves. He left us with the gift of his Holy Spirit. He left us with the gift of our fellow believers, the church, so that we can continue to rely on him and know that he's with us always and he's always looking after us and he's always caring for us. Jesus left us the church and through the church, Jesus left us his word and sacrament ministry that we can turn to when we have any doubts at all. We have God's holy word in the Bible that we can turn to. When we have trouble, when we're struggling, we can open the pages of our Bible and we can find comfort there knowing that it all points us to Jesus. <coughs> and we have the sacraments as well. We can trust in God that he has called us his own child through the power of the water and the word and holy baptism. God has marked us as one who has been forgiven, as one who has been made new through the awesome work of the Holy Spirit in our baptism. And we can rely on the true body and blood of Jesus that we receive each week as we come forward to this altar. We can rely on God's full and free forgiveness that has been earned through the body of Jesus broken and his blood shed on the cross in our place. As we partake in these sacraments, as we live in the promises given to us through these sacraments, as we rely on the Holy Spirit to strengthen and increase our faith through the words of Scripture, we know that God is with us. We know that Jesus really is who he says he is because of the work that he's done for us and the work that he continues to do for us each day. That's what gives us comfort. In the same way that John the Baptist received comfort from Jesus' answer to his disciples, we receive comfort from Jesus' answer for our lives of sin and struggle. We receive comfort knowing that no matter what we're facing, Jesus has already overcome it and we can trust in his perfect work for us. Now, if you're like me, you're thinking to yourself, of course, I, I know this stuff. I know that I can rely on God's word. I know that I can rely, rely on Jesus' work for me. I, I know that I can rely on my baptism and I can rely on the forgiveness that I receive through the Lord's Supper. I know that, and yet I still struggle to do so, and, and that can make you feel kind of guilty. And here's the thing. Listen to what Jesus says about John at the end of our reading. Starting in verse 11, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. John the Baptist was the last and greatest prophet. He was the return of Elijah. He was the one to prepare the way for Jesus' ministry, and yet he struggled with trusting that this was all part of God's plan. He struggled with putting his faith in Jesus and knowing that he could rely on him and on his work. And if John the Baptist struggled with it, don't you think that maybe when things get tough in your life, don't you think that maybe when you're having a difficult time or when your confidence is shaken, then maybe you might struggle with it too. And when that happens, we again turn back to the gifts of God. We turn back to His Word. We turn back to His sacraments. We rely on the promises that are given to us in these things. And we trust and we put our full faith and confidence in Jesus, knowing that He's already given us everything that we will ever need. And we can also turn to one another. We can turn to our fellow believers and encourage them as they struggle with different things in their lives. We can rely on our fellow believers to be there with us as we encounter new and different obstacles in our lives of faith as well. And my friends, as we live in the confidence that we have knowing that Jesus is our Savior, as we live in the confidence that we have knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we've received the promise of eternal life through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus in our place, we can go and share that faith with others. And we can do it with a renewed sense of confidence. We can go out into the world around us. We can go home to our families. We can go to our friends. We can go to our workplaces and the places where we hang out with others, the places where we go each week, and we can live confidently. We can be assured of our salvation. We can be assured that if God is for us, nothing can stand against us. We can live in the sure confidence of the forgiveness of our sins. We can live in the certain confidence of eternal life that's been promised to all who believe. And we can share our faith confidently with others. We can boldly 
and confidently proclaim the faith that we've been given by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can share our faith that we have as we live out our day-to-day -day lives. Wherever our lives may take us, we can live confidently knowing that Jesus continues to be right by our side. And people will listen. When they see your confidence in your faith, when they see your confidence in Jesus and what he's done for you, when they hear your confident word about God and his promises for all people who believe in him, people will listen and they'll want to know more. And that's when you can continue to confidently share God's word. That's where you can confidently speak about the blessings that God continues to pour out in your life. That's where you can confidently proclaim Jesus Christ to others, knowing full well that he came to save all people and to bring all who believe in him to eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand with me. We confess our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ,